Most people use ChatGPT like it's a fancier, smarter Google, just to get quick answers and search the web. But when we do that, we're really missing out on the most powerful features that it has to offer, and when used right, can seriously boost your productivity. And probably 90% of people don't even know they exist. So in this video, I'm going to show you what those features are and how you can best use them. Let's dive in. ChatGPT has a free version and two tiers of a paid version, $20 USD a month or $200 USD a month. I'll share with you a lot of the features that already come with the free version. And I'll also share with you some of the features that come with the paid version, just to help you decide if the paid version features are worth your money. And if you're an Apple user, I have a special treat for you as well. A cool feature that ChatGPT has that's also available on the free version is being able to access custom GPTs. So you'll see on the side that says GPTs on the left-hand column. If you click on that, it actually has other engines, if you will, that can work with ChatGPT. A popular one is Canva that I use. So if you click on Canva, you can start the chat using Canva as a plugin for your to work with your ChatGPT. I'm going to ask it to design a thumbnail for me and let's see what it comes up with. So it came up with two thumbnail designs. What this allows me to do is I can actually open these thumbnails or this work that it generated in Canva itself on that platform. So let's say I wanted to use this one, option one, and it'll open it up in Canva where now I can go ahead and edit it any way that I like. If you're an Apple user, have you ever wished that you could replace Siri with a more powerful AI like ChatGPT? Well, you actually can. If you go into your settings menu, you can go under Apple Intelligence. And from here, just make sure that Apple Intelligence is checked off or it's turned on, which means that you would have to have a device like an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max or higher or more recent. Then you would go down to here under extensions that says ChatGPT. If you click on that, you can use ChatGPT and click Setup, Next, and Enable ChatGPT. Now, once you have enabled ChatGPT to work with Siri, essentially what it does is if you ask Siri to do certain tasks that it's not able to handle, it would actually ask ChatGPT to do it for them. Write me a YouTube script that's about 10 minutes in length that talks about the best use case scenarios of ChatGPT. Make a note out of this. So you'll notice here that you can even instruct it to make a new note and it'll actually save it into your Apple Notes for you to further work on. Now, if you always want Siri to use ChatGPT, you can just ask it, hey Siri, ask ChatGPT to do such and such. And it'll actually use ChatGPT to do the task that you asked it to do. Another cool feature that is available for free users is called Canvas. The way you can use Canvas mode is to start your prompt with the word Canvas. And then you can ask it to produce any kind of written work for you. And you'll notice that it pulls it up in a different format where you have a split screen now. Canvas mode is really useful when you're writing or uh, working with code. Essentially, the way you want to see this is that you're really collaborating uh, with ChatGPT. Before, you know, if you wanted to edit the document or edit the work that ChatGPT has generated, you wouldn't be able to. You would have to ask it to regenerate it all over again and ask it to remove certain parts. But now what you can do in Canvas mode is that you can go directly into the work that it has produced and you can just edit it yourself. It's almost like you're uh, sharing a Google Doc with another person, but instead you're sharing it with uh, ChatGPT. So for example, if I wanted to change this word, hey everyone, to hi, you can just simply do that. Have you ever been reluctant to use AI like ChatGPT because you're worried about the data that it's collecting or the personal information that it might be holding on to? Well, there's actually modes with ChatGPT where you can instruct it not to remember any of the prompts or the information that you have fed it so that you can be rest assured that it wouldn't be using the information or holding on to the information that you put into it. So there's a few ways that you can do that. In both the free and the paid version, you'll see at the top right-hand corner next to your 
uh, profile letter there, uh, this dotted kind of chat uh, chat bubble. Now, when you click on that, it's actually going to turn on a temporary chat. It's kind of like an incognito mode for uh, for your web, uh, web browser. So when you click on that, it tells you what this means. Uh, temporary chats, uh, not in history, uh, no model training, and the memory is turned off. So you can give it a prompt. So you can give it any prompt that you'd like. And then after you've done that, you can go ahead and uh, just delete this particular temporary chat. We can delete it. And you'll notice that it's actually not anywhere saved on your left-hand column, uh, nor will it save any of the data that you have fed it. So this is particularly good if you just wanted to generate like an image. And sometimes I wanted like a fun image that had a picture or an image of uh, one of my kids or for myself. And I don't want it to remember what they look like or for that matter for it to store that data. We can use a temporary chat like so. Now, if you just want to permanently have ChatGPT never remember any of your data or information, you can go into your profile here by clicking on the top right corner, then go to settings. And there's a few ways that you can turn this off. You can go to data controls and up here in data controls, it says improve the model for everyone. And it's by default turned on, which means that it'll take your data and it'll help train the model with what you feed it. You can turn that off. So model improvement, improve the model for everyone. And if you turn that off, it basically means that it won't be taking your data to train the model. Another place that you can turn off a lot of the saving uh, would be under personalization. If you go under personalization, there's the memory section here. And by default, again, it's turned on where you reference saved memories and reference chat history. You can toggle these off and it won't remember any of your past conversations or it won't remember any of your previous memories. Now there's pros and cons to this. Uh, ChatGPT, if you allow it to remember uh, what you have, uh, the information that you have fed it before, you won't have to repeat yourself over and over again. But for people who really value privacy and don't want any of their information to be stored, uh, these are ways that you can turn it off so that ChatGPT doesn't hold on to your information. Now, another cool feature that you can use with ChatGPT is what we call voice mode. If you look in the uh, chat box here, you might have noticed that there's a microphone uh, on the bottom right corner of that box. And right next to it, there's also uh, something that's called voice mode. The difference between these two is that the, the microphone just dictates the instruction that you give it without you having to type it out. And it just transcribes the instruction that you want to give it. But right next to it, if you click on use voice mode, what this voice mode does is it, al it allows you to converse with ChatGPT like it's another person. Hello there. Hi there. How's it going? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm great. Thanks. What can I do for you today? I have a job interview coming up with McDonald's and I would like to practice with you. Of course. I'd be happy to help you practice. Let's get started. I'll ask you some common interview questions and you can respond as if you're in the interview. Ready? Here's the first question. Why do you want to work at McDonald's? Because I like your food. That's a good start. You can also mention any other reasons, like the opportunity to learn new skills or work in a team environment. Ready for the next question? Tell me about a time you provided excellent customer service. So as you can see, it'll actually provide you feedback uh, as to whether or not your answer was good and how you can improve the answer that you gave it. So I thought this was a pretty neat feature for you to rehearse things like job interviews, or maybe you can even provide it a script when you're trying to memorize or rehearse for a play or a presentation that you have, and that it can uh, listen to how you present and give you some constructive feedback as to how you can improve your presentation. Another really powerful feature that ChatGPT has is the ability to be able to look at something visually and be able to understand what it's looking at. I gave it a prompt to suggest certain times or the best times for me to be able to work on my YouTube channel. And it takes me a certain number of hours to be able to do certain things like scripting, editing, filming, and such. And then I gave it an image of my calendar to for it to read, visually read, and suggest any good times for me to work on. So let's see what it says. So if you look here, it's uh, scheduled in a, a total of 21 hours for me to, uh, to work on my YouTube channel, and it broke it up into uh, several days and uh, which days or which hours of the day that it suggests that I uh, schedule my time into. 
Now, I understand that you can probably connect your Google Calendar to ChatGPT for it to do this a little bit better. But when I when I experimented with it, it actually didn't do a very good job in being able to read the calendar when I directly connected it to it. So when I took a screenshot of the calendar and fed it into the prompt, it actually worked a lot better. Now, as you can see, the free ChatGPT version is packed full of features that you can already use very well. But if you've been always wondering if it's worth that extra bit of money to pay $20 a month and what features it comes with, well, these are some of the features that I thought the average user might be able to use quite well. Now, one feature that I thought was really cool with the paid version is the ability to be able to share your screen with ChatGPT. I'm going to be demonstrating this using my iPad, but it can also be used on your iPhone or your iPad as well. This is not a feature that's available for a MacBook or a computer as of yet. Now, when you open up the uh, ChatGPT app, on the bottom right corner for the voice mode, you, you would click on that. And then you'll also notice on the bottom left that you'll have the camera icon as well. So I'm looking at a mouse here. Would you be able to tell me uh, what kind of mouse this is? Sure, that looks like a Logitech MX Master Mouse. It's got that ergonomic design and the side scroll wheel. So it's pretty recognizable. Uh, do you know what model of the MX Master it is? It looks like it might be the MX Master 3, judging by the design and the placement of the buttons. Uh, it's a really popular one for productivity. Now, as you can see, this could be immensely helpful when you're out and about and you want to be able to understand or, or ask questions about something that you're looking at live at the moment. You would be able to pull out your phone, just turn on the camera and ask ChatGPT, what am I looking at? And ask whatever questions that you would like for it to answer. Another very useful feature that I find on the paid version is what we call projects. Uh, on my screen here, uh, I have on the left-hand side the paid version and on the right-hand side, the free version. Now, if I look at the, the toolbar on the left, you'll notice that uh, the paid version has what we call new projects, whereas the free version does not. So a project, you can essentially see projects as folders for you to be able to organize your chats that you've had with ChatGPT under certain categories. So under, uh, so under the paid version that I have here, I have, let's say, uh, as an example, travels, uh, travel plans to Korea. And I want to be able to house uh, certain topics or certain chats that I had that was specifically about that particular project or that topic. And it would be able to organize uh, the chats that way, or I would be able to organize my chats that way as well. Or my YouTube channel, I would be able to instruct it to do certain things for my YouTube channel, and I would be able to organize it in that folder or in that particular project. You can see in contrast, however, with the free version, there is no ability to be able to organize my chats. So you're just going to be able, you're just going to see that there's just random conversations that I've had with ChatGPT where it's just listed. Now, when you start a new project, uh, you can actually give it instructions as to how you want it to respond. And you can customize the responses that you can have under these particular projects. So as an example, uh, let's say I wanted to make travel plans to Korea and I've had conversations with it in the past where I asked you, what kind of things should we do? When is the best time to travel to Korea? And I also gave it instructions so that I can practice my Korean, respond back to me in Korean like I'm eight years old. And that's why you'll see that it has responded to me in Korean every time. But as you can see, the conversations that I had about my travel plans to Korea doesn't mix with the conversations that I would have about my YouTube channel. So this is a really nice way for me to organize the chats that I had with ChatGPT. Now, if you've ever wanted to use ChatGPT like a personal assistant, with the paid version, you kind of can. There's a feature called tasks where you can ask ChatGPT to regularly do certain tasks for you on whatever frequency that you wanted to do. So I would start my prompt with the word tasks and then I would prompt it to what I wanted to do. In this case, provide me new AI news every morning at eight o'clock every day. I can see that this is a very powerful and useful feature for someone who does something on a regular or routine basis. 
instead of having to spend time going out and researching and, and filtering through news information for myself and looking for the most useful AI information, I can just have ChatGPT go out and obtain that information for me and push me a notification to let me know that it's ready for me to read. If you have any tasks that are routinely done every single day, you can probably use tasks and instruct ChatGPT to conduct that task for you so that you can save hours in your week not having to do that repetitive task over and over again and just automate it with ChatGPT. So there you have it. Whether you go with the free or the paid version of ChatGPT, as you can see, there are so many features that you can take advantage of. I encourage you to get your hands on some of these uh, features and try them yourself. They're super fun to interact and play with, and they can be very useful to our everyday productivity. Let me know in the comments below which feature you think you're gonna end up using the most and how you're gonna use it. I wanna thank you for spending your precious time with me today, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.